Hi, Aaron O'Toole, MP for Durham. Welcome to my Blue Skies political vidcast. This week, the news of the day is the Liberal government's decision to pay $10.5 million and to apologize to Omar Khadr, despite the fact that they know he was involved in the taking of a life of Christopher Speer, a U.S. Army medic. Can you explain to Canadians why Omar Khadr should receive $10 million? And there is a, a judicial process underway that that uh, judicial process is coming to its conclusion. So let's break down this settlement in five easy steps. First, was Omar Khadr a child soldier? No, he was not. According to UN regulations at the time, he was 15. You had to be under 15 to be considered a child soldier. He was also there in Afghanistan with his parent, his legal guardian and his brother. They were fighting together at first and then independently. So he was not a child soldier per se, and he was captured as an enemy combatant after taking the life of Sergeant Christopher Spear. Number two, a lot of people are comparing this to the Mehar Arar settlement. There is no comparison at, at all. Mr. Arar was innocent when the United States sent him abroad where he was mistreated. Mr. Cotter has admitted to his role fighting as part of Al-Qaeda, has admitted in part to taking Sergeant Spears' life. There is no relationship to the Arar case. Number three, I've said this sends the wrong signal. Certainly the whole saga is tragic and people don't like Guantanamo and other things, but to pay $10.5 million for someone whose saga began with him acting with the terrorist organization Al-Qaeda, at a time we're trying to stop people from becoming radicalized, we're trying to stop radical terrorist ideology from spreading around the world, we're in some ways rewarding Mr. Cotter at the end of this long saga. That sends the wrong signal. Number four, what about the Supreme Court of Canada who ruled that Mr. Cotter's rights were violated, his charter rights? Well, they were right in three limited occasions, three visits by Canadian officials to Mr. Cotter in Guantanamo. The first two cases were in February and September 2003. Jean Chrétien was Prime Minister and officials went and questioned Mr. Cotter. The third visit, the controversial one in March 2004, where Mr. Cotter had been deprived sleep before the officials went to question him, that took place under Prime Minister Martin. Ralph Goodale, the Public Safety Minister, was in Cabinet as Minister of Finance. Those are the three limited instances where they said Mr. Cotter's charter rights were violated. Your charter rights don't apply when you're overseas fighting with a terrorist organization. The charter did not apply when Mr. Cotter was detained on the battlefield, saved by U.S. Army medics, and brought to Guantanamo. The charter violations on three limited occasions occurred when liberal governments sent officials there to question him. And fifth, should someone benefit from a saga that began with their illegal or terrorist-related activities. In law, we have a Latin expression that goes ex terpi causa non orator actio, meaning there should be no action arising from dishonorable or illegal activity on the part of someone. This is one of those cases. Should Mr. Cotter benefit from actions that began with him taking lives in Afghanistan? I don't think so. So it's a big surprise the Liberals leak this out just as the Prime Minister steps on a plane to go to Europe and days after Canada Day. They hope you're camping. They hope you're not paying attention. They know Canadians are going to be outraged by this. I certainly am. Thanks for tuning into the Blue Skies political vidcast. Thanks for blue-skying this issue with me, Aaron O'Toole, Member of Parliament for Durham.